Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Melanie Benson, who is in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Melanie? Good, I'm great. And I am, as usual, here in San Diego. So Melanie is a revenue strategist, business performance optimizer who helps leaders uh, with the most powerful mindset, actions, and strategies to propel them to the next level of success and uh, does this with neuro-linguistic uh, results-oriented programming, etc. And you're even a spiritual um, counselor, I see. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have enough education, so I needed to get like five degrees, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the best part, I think, as I was, I, was, I was reading up on you, the best part is that you spend your free time searching for the world's best beaches, and that's a noble, a noble endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well live by one too, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, well, well, today what we want to talk about is how people can stop being bottlenecks and can actually move forward to achieve bolder goals. So when you say stop being a bottleneck, what, what do you mean? Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, especially people who are entrepreneurial oriented, they're creative, they're leaders, they have no shortage of great ideas. But what oftentimes happen is they become a bottleneck because they can't get out of their old thinking to create new results. So they're stuck and they can't figure out why. So we could apply this to sales. We could apply this to building teams. We can uh, apply it to building a business, making money, anything in your life you want more of. If you are not already creating it, you're probably bottlenecking and thinking, think of it like, you know, that you turn the garden hose to water your plants mm -hmm. and you're just getting a dribble somehow the hose is getting stepped on, right? And that's what we do to ourselves. So what are some of the ways that you can recognize this is happening? Because obviously, uh, if you take entrepreneurs or salespeople, whatever, um, sometimes what, what gets you initial success actually, as you say, can be, can, be the, can be what's stopping you from getting to the next level of success. Yeah, I think um, until you're in the midst of it, it's really hard to recognize because we think we know things, but until we live them, you know, it's like that, that old saying, one of the big signs is what you're doing that used to work is not working anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is you're having a lot of breakdowns. You're having a lot of drama. You're having a lot of the same issues over and over and over again. And you're thinking like, okay, why, why do I keep having this problem when I think I'm doing everything right? And that's probably because the level of decision-making and thinking and mindset you're in is not matching the results that you want next. Those are two of the biggies. Yeah. And what are some of the ways you can start to break out of this? Well, I think the first thing is um, hopefully listening to something like this, where you're bringing you know, new ideas, you're bringing fresh uh, perspective to someone, you know, again, sometimes you need someone to shine a light on a pattern that you don't recognize for yourself. So you have to recognize what's happening. And then the, the next thing you need to do is I believe in taking bold action, like making right. bold moves. And so in my own life and when my clients get stuck, oftentimes the very thing that will break you out of a bottleneck is doing something so outside of your norm, something so like setting a goal that's so big, you're terrified by it. You have no idea how to pull it off. You cannot do it with the same level of thinking that got you here. And it's going to require you to radically shift or start using new muscles, new thinking, and really like do things very differently. And so it's one of the first things you should do is set a goal that's so bold and so big that you have no idea how to pull it off. And it snaps you out of this current way you're doing things. And I presume then that forces you to, if you set a really big goal for yourself, then it forces you to start setting in motion the steps to get there. And that maybe breaks you out of the inertia. Yeah, you know, this might even be another bottleneck is sometimes we need to know how to do something before we'll actually start taking steps to pursue it. But if you actually set the goal and make it bigger than anything you've done before, then as you start to take those steps, you're going to start gaining momentum. Think of it like a snowball. You mm -hmm. know, it might be small when it starts at the top of a really big hill, but by the time it gets to the bottom, it's, it's gained momentum, it's picking up speed, it's getting bigger. And that's what happens when we start pursu pursuing it. And you literally do not have to know how to do all the steps. You have to be willing right. to take the next step and then let that step reveal either the resource or the clarity for the following step. And that's how you break free of 
being a bottleneck to your greatest vision, your big ideas and things you want to do and you have no idea how. And I think what's, uh, what's interesting there, which you said, is that we don't have to always know all the steps ourselves. And I think that is, that's probably where you know, entrepreneurs or highly motivated people where they probably get into the biggest trap is they, they think that they have to be able to do everything themselves and know everything. And then suddenly, you know, they're stuck, right? And reaching out and finding the resource or finding the help or the coach or something doesn't come naturally. Yeah, I think um, there's certain styles, certain personality styles that really struggle with asking for support. Mm -hmm. And there's some people who maybe are wanting to ask for support, but they don't know who to ask or who's going to do what. Maybe they've been burned before and they're uncomfortable hiring a mentor or even hiring team. Like you probably talk to people all day long who've said, hey, I tried to hire this virtual assistant or this person. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out. And now I'm gun shy, mm -hmm. which again is another place where we bottleneck is we try to do it all alone. Mm -hmm. The fastest way to grow is to let go. Right. And I think to your point, I think we often will use one negative experience and one negative experience, maybe, as you say, maybe a virtual assistant, right? We had a negative experience, with one virtual assistant. There's 500 million ways of having virtual assistants, but just because our first one didn't work out, we say that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So I, I believe we either collect excuses or we collect successes. Mm -hmm. And what many of us do is when we've been burned or we're afraid, like when we're going to make a mistake or we can't afford to mm -hmm. do the wrong thing, we focus on the mistake we might make instead of the potential outcome. And then we run around and we collect evidence to say, see, that's not going to work. Uh, it didn't work that one time 10 years ago when I hired somebody for two hours, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm being a little facetious and I, and sure. I don't mean to un, you know, like to minimize someone's bad experience, but look, we have so many big things that we can be doing with our lives. We have so many goals, we have so many ideas, we have so much, you know, we can accomplish. But if we get stuck on the reasons why it can't work, it will never work. Mm -hmm. But we can just as easily focus on the reasons why it might work or it could work or that one possible option. We learn this in sales training, right? Mm -hmm. You don't focus on the no's, you focus on the one yes. All you need is that one yes to start getting the momentum. It's yeah. The and, and I think also today that we have very little excuse left because uh, we have access in a way that we've never had before. I mean, we were just talking about virtual assistant, right? Once upon a time, that would have been a nonsense, right? Because we didn't have the infrastructure for it. But now you have access to resources, access to people like yourself uh, from anywhere in the globe, right? So your, your access to resources and help is there. You just have to reach out and find the right one that works for you. Yeah, I believe with technology, we, we have resources that, that make any goal achievable. But the other thing that people don't understand is a mind that's conditioned for success is the most powerful machine on the planet. Mm -hmm. And what, what a lot of us are doing is we're conditioning our mindsets to fail, to, um, to struggle, to have doubts and fears. And that's a habit. Like we can cultivate that as a habit in our thinking, or we can cultivate a habit of thinking uh, positive, uh, being a bold action taker. So I think one of the, the biggest ways that you can move any goal forward, whether it's a sales goal, a leadership goal, a business goal, a personal goal, is start conditioning your mind for the success you want, rather than focusing on all the fears, the things that could go wrong, the beliefs, the, uh, you know, we, I call it a paradigm of possibility. We all have a paradigm based on all the things that have happened up to now. And in any moment, we can shatter those old experiences and create a new one. And that's the opportunity in front of you. So I think uh, part of what you're saying there is that we have to be mindful and conscious of our own thought patterns, right? Uh, I mean, the, the, uh, I think the statistic I always use from psychology today, because it kind of blew my mind, is like 68% of, of all the dialogue that we have self-dialogue in our head on a daily basis is negative, right? I mean, that's like two thirds of what you're thinking every day is negative. <laughs> so I think what you're saying is you have to start being mindful and conscious of what you're feeding your own brain. Right? Well, our inner dialogue is the fuel to take an action or to hold ourselves back. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be very cognizant of what we're like fueling our mind with. 
And so, you know, I, I see people all day long who have struggled financially, who have never achieved any goal. And the minute they train their mind to think differently and to think more strategically and really like have the mindset of the, of the, that's aligned with the goal, they achieve things they never knew were possible. And so that's within our control. Like nobody can take that away from us. Mm -hmm. Nobody can control our thoughts. Only we can. And that's the one thing every day, every minute of every day, we can have the greatest impact in the world is changing the way we think so it's aligned with better, more positive, uh, accelerated results, right? Yeah. And I think that goes hand in hand with where you put your focus, right? On a, yes. on a daily basis, if you put your focus on, on positive things and things that can move you forward, or do you let your mind wander over into news and social media and all of these other things <laughs> that maybe will trigger some not so positive emotions in you? Yeah. So I think to your point again, is we have complete control over certain things and that is and one of those is where we where we put our focus yeah i want to give two examples on this because I, I think this is an important piece that that can be a deal breaker for any of us is first of all um you brought up social media that's one of the places where comparitis kicks in yes. mm -hmm. and it's 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 the um it's the gremlin that will take you out of the game really fast right and whether you're comparing to where you think you're supposed to be in life or you're comparing yourself against where others are in their life, look, there's, there's no good that comes out of comparing. But mm -hmm. what you can do is use that as information. Okay, so if that person is achieving those kinds of goals, what are they doing that I'm not? What have I been unwilling to do up to now? That if I just adopted some of their thinking and their habits and their choices, and I started to adopt their success strategy, what would I be able to accomplish that's more in alignment with my goals? Mm -hmm. So don't use it as a negative, use it as, as information that can uh, help you basically overcome really bad habits that you mm -hmm. probably lived with your whole life and create better success habits. Uh, now I don't remember what the second one was. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, but I think uh, also then that goes hand in hand with you have to have some kind of abundant mindset, right? Because yeah. otherwise you see, if you see somebody with something that you don't have, you go, you know, there are people who have the, the finite mindset and we'll go, oh, they got that, therefore that's not available to me. Instead of, yeah. it's available to me, I should figure out how they got that so I can get something like that too. Yeah, Carol Dweck calls that fixed versus growth mindset. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I think it's a fantastic book. But to, more to your point, I like to call it a bold mindset. And see, bold is not about doing crazy things. It's about doing things in the boldest way for you. And so if you wanna achieve things you've never done before, you have to tap into what would bold be for me. So here's, here's bold for me. First of all, by nature, I'm a really shy, introverted person, right? Mm -hmm. um, I grew up with lots of fears and doubts. And so the boldest thing I ever did was stand up on a stage and not have any idea how to do public speaking and say, I'm gonna figure this out. Mm -hmm. so I did that before I even had my own business. Right. And, and, and so it just kind of starts to build up that muscle like, okay, well, if I can do this, what else can I do? And, and so start practicing taking, I, I call them bold moves. Mm -hmm. Do something that gets you unstuck and moving towards what you want, even if it, you think it has nothing to do with the goal. Yeah, because I think exactly because I think part of that, as you said at the beginning, is that muscle is building that muscle of taking of taking chance of being bold of doing things that are outside of your your comfort zone, doing new things, trying new things, and and in business, obviously, and especially today, because there are so many opportunities to break paradigms and to do things differently, that you have to you almost have to have a bold mindset to succeed. Yeah, can we draw a quick um, example on sales? Sure. So yeah. I'm sure you talk to people often who have some fear around selling, right? Mm -hmm. And so for some people, the boldest thing they might do is instead of talking themselves out of those follow-up calls mm -hmm. is actually sit their buns down and <laughs> pick up the phone and make those follow-up calls. Or um, if they're trying to pitch themselves to be a speaker or they want to get on more stages, instead of finding 70 things that don't move the needle forward, yep. make yourself sit down and pitch those people to get on their stages or, or maybe pitch is a strong word, maybe invitation mm -hmm. or um, 
uh, open up a dialogue, right? Like try, try creating language that supports what you want. Because sometimes the language is what gets people stuck. And so apply it to wherever you're not getting the results that you really desire. Yeah, and there's another interesting, um, there is another interesting thing is, uh, and I was talking to somebody recently about this, and they brought it up, they called it the imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. It's where we start to think that we're imposters, like, I'm not really an expert. I'm not, you know, you could, you said speaking there, you're, maybe you're going to, to speak and you think, why would people listen to me? I don't really know. And you actually talk yourself talk yourself out of it you talk yourself down you actually start fearing that you're an imposter about to get found out and again that's the opposite of what you're talking about right well I'm, i like that you brought up imposter syndrome because it's probably one of the biggest reasons people don't really go for something big mm -hmm. I, I specialize in working with people who want to make a great impact and so we're trying to find that way that they get out of their invisibility cloak and right. If they're afraid that someone is going to view them as not being capable, it can shut you down. It can, you know, get into that your head with those gremlins and you, you'll get convinced that you cannot do something. And that's just fear. Mm -hmm. Fear will take over and present itself as your logical thinking. It pretends like it's this rational reason why you should do something. And so if you want to break free of this fear that, oh my gosh, someone's going to find out, I don't know it all then just get out there and start doing it and you'll realize nobody knows it all. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. the secret. Nobody knows it all. Most people don't have it all figured out. And, and I'm a big fan of, of vulnerable leadership where, yeah, I'm not perfect. Yeah, I make mistakes. Yes, I don't know it all. But I'm willing to get out there and take you where you don't know you can go because you won't do it on your own, right? And I think that's the secret sauce is, no, nobody has it all figured out. Yeah, and to be honest, what's most fascinating, obviously, for people is when you are able to tell them about the the hiccups and screw ups you had along the way, as yeah. you know, and how you learned from them and moved on, because that's what people can relate to. If yeah. you just come out and sort of say, "Well, let me tell you about how wonderfully successful I've been," and it sounds like everything just fell into place for you, this will be lacks a little authenticity right you know that's actually i have a podcast as well and it's actually my most popular episodes are the ones where either i or a guest have revealed some major major <laughs> faux pas, and they're like oh my god you're human you do these things too and mm -hmm. and people need to know they're not alone and all that yeah yeah. So um, we're bumping up against the end of our time, uh, Melanie. So the last few moments, I wanted to give you a chance to tell everybody a little bit about yourself, what you do and how they can learn more about you and get into contact with you. Yeah, sure. So um, my, my, my gift in this world is helping people figure out how to amplify the impact and the income they want to make. And uh, one of the best things uh, I have right now that I would love to have you take advantage of is I have a training that's given online on how to really start uh, establishing a bold mindset and set big bold goals that stretch you to become someone you didn't know was possible and i teach you how to use leverage techniques and how to scale your business how to how to do the things that you're scared to do and really position yourself as an authority uh, i would love to gift that to you we we would uh um we have a we usually charge for it, but we're opening it up to uh certain audiences for free that's it ownyourboldchallenge.com and, uh, you know, of course, I've got my Amplify Your Success podcast and would love to have you join us on that and listen in. And maybe we could even convince you, John, to get on the uh, show with us at some point. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, just uh, send me an invite. I'd be happy sure. to. You got it. Excellent. Yeah. Well, this has been another Expert Inside interview. Melanie Benson, thank you very much. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, or CRM. I'll see you all again for another Expert interview really soon. Thank you.